Good morning. Here we are at the tip-off of a very exciting game here. This is Rob Rowan with x Table Sports. And Andy Miller, one of the referees, is joining me to do color commentary. And we're excited to be here. This game is uh, Portland Pounders and the British Lions. So, uh, Andy, you want to tell us a little bit about the British Lions? You have a little bit of knowledge going on with there just to get everybody set? Well, sure. The British squad this uh, weekend is divided into two teams. This is their A team. And uh, they've got a couple of uh, former uh, players that used to be on American teams. Troy Collins spent a couple of years with the uh, Texas Stampede during their championship years. And uh, Ross Morrison also played with the Denver Harlequin up through last year and helped them win the U.S. National Championship. Yeah, that was, that was Ross was number six. Okay, so here we go. The British team has it. Uh, number eight, pass. Is he going to score? Yes. So we have, uh, let's go through the team here with, uh, at number eight is Troy Collins. That, he passed it to number 12, and that is Mandy Semi. Uh, number six, Ross Morrison is out on the floor, I believe. Let's yeah, see. Ross is uh, setting up in the yes. key on defense there. Okay, and then we have, uh, what else do we have here? Let's see what other player is on the court. So, so oriented. Number 13 is not on the roster. I think that may be Richard Davies, number 13. We'll have to see. Point five player. Let's see. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, looks like uh, the goal, and we missed it, but here we go. A nice breakaway for British. Oh boy, nice hit by Chance Sumner. Jump ball. Will Grew with some good hands. Now, we've seen Will before, and I know Will is uh, a U.S. team member. U.S. Paralympic team member, yes. He's also a crafty player, and he caused that turnover there with some good hands, but I think uh, Chance Sumner also, with the, the two of them came on like a freight train there, didn't they? They absolutely did. Hard hitting. Hard hitting. But uh, that's what this sport's about. We've, we've seen some great action. Uh, this is the second day of this tournament. Yes, it is. A lot of a lot of really good games uh, yesterday. Some close games, very competitive. Oh, and of course, an this, upset too, this tournament, as opposed to some of the other tournaments that we have during the year, is unique in a couple of ways. We have uh, seven, I believe, international teams here, and the level of play is just top notch. Not yet. And those British, the score is 2-1. Britain with the ball. This is the Lion team. And he's nice pass. I have a feeling we're going to see some nice big hits. Now, Joe Soros, the uh, coach from Britain, he said, we're here with two teams, and we're here to play. He says, winning isn't going to be the, the, isn't the ultimate goal, but more to get some time out there and really see what I've got. Yeah. Now, a lot of the uh, clubs... Uh, a lot of the clubs uh, have gone to having a developmental squad and bringing, uh, organizing into two teams so that they get their less experienced players additional time and to develop and get we better. We saw our first turnover of the game there, didn't we? Yep. Is that uh, too much time in the key, or what do we? What do you think it was? Uh -huh, we was had our first. It was a technical. It was a technical foul on number 13 from the British team. We don't see too many of those, do we? He's in the box, so. Okay. He must have. He must have uttered a colorful metaphor. Have to put this face in the other way. <laughs> so, a uh, nice easy score there. Uh, Portland, uh, so far Britain, uh, the Lions beat Canada too, which I expect there was no uh, big upset there, but uh, New Zealand beat them in a close game yesterday. Yes, they did. I actually uh, officiated that game. It was a very hard-hitting, intense game. Uh, that's what we love. And Portland also beat Canada, too, and they lost to Sweden, which um, that uh, Swedish team is playing. And they, uh, they, they didn't make it into the top eight this time, but uh, that was a, a nice win for them. Okay. Got a little timeout here get into the rhythm of this game. Yes. <laughs> so tell me about uh, what's it like watching a game as a, as a referee? Is it a little different experience for you? It's much different um, than being a spectator because obviously you're looking for um, adherence to the rules, of course, is the most important thing, but it's also important to us to essentially not be visible. If we're doing our job correctly, the game proceeds and flows, and we don't have a big 
um, influence on the game one way or the other uh, if we're doing our job correctly and so forth. Positioning is very, very important. So if you'll notice, uh, and I, I should give a shout out to the referees that we've got today, Darren Roberts and Donna Seabach are officiating this game here today. Okay, nice defense there by the Pounders. He actually pushed him out before he could get to the goal line. Uh, that was, uh, was that number three who did that? Uh, let me see who that was. The number. I don't have that. Um, I don't have a number two on my list here, so I'm in trouble. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, you know what no, we might. Not for. All right, yeah, we do have a. We have to check this out. British kind of what happened with our program, so not exact. Here we are. Here's the one. Another penalty. No, this is the uh, Lions, I believe. I know, but I'm just uh, probably the the number two is Johnny Bobbitt from the uh, Bulldogs. They're, that's their developmental squad. to get this set, settled out here. What, we should ask him when he drops in on us next time. <laughs> Come on in, we need to talk to you for a second. Well, we have a 4-1. The Pounders are putting some strong pressure on here. Uh, you can tell that they play together. Oh, nice hit, nice hit. And I think we have a turnover there. That'll be a turnover. Chance with a nice hit there, right at the right moment, and uh, nobody was open. Um, this Portland, Portland team is, uh, is putting on very, very tough defensive pressure. Seth McBride bringing the ball in the chance. Summer. Seth is on the U.S. team. That's number 15. He's from Alaska, uh, and he's a smart player. Okay, number 10 from them. Uh, Will Brew to Chance Summer. And we saw Chance play in the uh, knock and roll tournament. And it's good to see him again. He's a tough player, big hitter. He's big, and he's a big guy. Very tall. Uh, he's the main ball play, uh, carrier sometimes for this team, so we'll see what he does. And as you can see, he does disrupt the other team's defense. Tough player. After the race is there. Nice block there. Max Woodbury. It's the job of the, of the low pointers, right? Yes. Close the door there in the corner. If they can, at this level, if they can slow down the opposing player, just even for a half a second, that makes a difference. Yeah. Right. Nice pass. Britain scores, number seven. Jason Roberts under some tough pressure there. So, uh, you see the uh, time clock, the uh, 40 second clock. 40 second clock is up above the baskets right there. There it is, okay. God, I, I, of course. It's a real facility, isn't it? And uh, I might add that this is the second year that we've adopted the 40 second clock. Uh, and it, it does help to prevent some of the stalling that we used to see in, in uh, previous years. It forces the teams to uh, uh, score a goal within that 40 seconds or that results in a turnover. It increases the scoring too, doesn't it? Uh, there's some, qu some question about whether it actually does that or not, but it certainly makes the games more interesting. Yeah. I was starting to say before that uh, uh, if you notice the positioning of the officials, uh, we have what's called a diagonal, and what we try to do is keep the, all of the play in between the two officials at all times. Um, and so you'll see them um, adjust their positions on the floor as the oh, play is, goes on so pressure. they can keep it between them. It's called maintaining the diagonal. We're trying to keep them from getting the us. Look at the pressure they're putting on. Time is running down. Time is running down. The pass to number two, a nice done pass, and he scores. Again, we're not sure who, not, for sure who number two is. We think that's Johnny Colgan, but we're not 100% sure. We will find out at some point. And, uh, but that, they were under some tough pressure there. Absolutely. And, uh, Denver's that, applying really full court defensive pressure, whereas you see the British team has adopted the policy or the strategy of dropping back and setting up in the key. Yeah. So it's making it, putting no pressure on Denver bringing that. the ball. Nice up pass, score by Chance Summer. You can just see the chemistry between the Chance and uh, Will that they have yeah. working together. They, they really have had some nice feeling out there. I like their de defense too. Yes. 
the oh, call. There you go. Another, oh, out of his hand, a turnover for Britain. They forced a turnover with that one. And they forced it to, you know, to give it to a, a 1.5. That was Jason Roberts. Somebody who probably could get that ball, but it has to be right on the money. Yes. So, Andy, you are, you're from the other side of the country. Chandler, Arizona, where it's a heck of a lot warmer than it is uh -huh. here today. In fact, if I haven't mentioned it, we're in Birmingham, Alabama, and it's about 50 degrees. Look at that tough fight in the middle. This, I tell you what, we're starting to see some real energy going on here. Holden yeah. with a oh, nice big speed. Locks him up, but he's scored. Now, the Great Britain team is uh, starting to come out of the key and put, put some additional defensive pressure on a little further up court. What you just saw there is probably one of the first timeouts I've seen in a while where it was called not for uh, saving the ball possession. The call because the coach actually wanted to get with his team right. and discuss something because the score is eight to three. We're 2.45 left in the first quarter. And uh, you know, already a five point lead, that could be tough to start with. And their coach, Joe Soros, is probably one of the greats of the Tampa Generals at the time. As a player, yes, the Tampa uh, Generals. Coached a, a Canadian team, which is very controversial to the, some of the Americans uh, to win the uh, some of the championships that he did against the U.S. team. And now here's Coach of Great Britain. And uh, we had him, by the way, to do color at the knock and roll. And he's a very knowledgeable man on the game. Absolutely. Joe's been been around. It's a so it's kind of fun to see him in action on the other side coaching now. And you as a, uh, a ref and me as a commentator, we keep ourselves neutral. <laughs> totally of what we see. We root for everybody. That's right. That's the only way to do it. Okay, Britain needs to get a goal here, and they're bringing it in. And he's under pressure there. Nice give and go. Here we go. To the races. Oh, not, oh nice hit. That's one of them spinning. That's a spinning violation. Yeah, it was. Yeah. There we go. Spinning violation for those that are not familiar with the rules is when the player is hit behind the rear axle, resulting in a change of direction. Because that's actually the one way you can really get injured in this game. Yeah. There's also a variation called the vertical spin. Easy goal score for Britain, 8-4. One thing about that is you do not use, you want to keep yourself very clean about not getting a penalty when you're under a penalty. Because that's like uh, making, uh, what they say, making problems when you don't need to. Very seldom do the players serve an entire one minute penalty. Right, as a goal release. If the other team scores a goal, then the player is released from the penalty box. Oh, look at that. Got a turnover there. Turnover there. That's a rare turnover. Portland so far. That maybe this. Uh -huh. so referee Jared Roberts is recording a first half warning for contact before the whistle. Who was it against? Number seven. That's a very interesting call because sometimes you see that one called and sometimes you don't. What we look for is, uh, you know, just about on any play there's going to be some contact. Oh. Like with everything else. We're, oh, look at that. That was a nice play by Chance Summer. He saw the ball over there coming. He knew that this person didn't have control. He knew if he hit him at the right moment, he would not be able to get the ball and turned it over. Yeah. So, Troy Collins getting some assistance there. Picked up off the four. So the question is, how tough is it on these courts when these guys go over? <laughs> Do they have to resurface these courts often? I really don't know. I, I know that this court is uh, in remarkably good position for the amount of rugby that's played on it, so I'm sure there is some maintenance that goes on. Yes. I know we've had some questions in Tampa. We may need to uh, get the uh, head of this uh, program talking to the t Tampa people so that they can understand how wonderful this court is and why it's worth whatever it takes to make it happen. Yeah, from the official's perspective, we like it because uh, there's plenty of room all the way around. We can inbound the ball at any point. In some of the smaller courts where there's not as much clearance, we have to inbound the ball on the opposite side of where we should sometimes just because of physical limitations. The time is running down here. They need to be operated. Seven seconds. What was the call? I we have 10 so. seconds in the key on Max. Uh, there. An offensive player uh, oh. can only be in the key for less than 10 seconds. Uh, he got caught. Uh, that was a 
results in a turnover. Number one in uh, Max Woodbury. So it's 8 4. With one minute 20 seconds, we get down to one minute. Time becomes a big issue because of last possession. Look at that pass, beautiful pass there. And uh, no hit there. The score. Britain brings it within three again. But I'll tell you what, whatever Joe said seems to have helped a little bit because they uh, we were down by five and now it's a three point game. They're setting up a key defense here, Britain. And found the hole. Will Groove. Will Groove found, finds the hole. I guess if you have the patience, you'll find something a lot of times. Huh? Here goes Ross Morrison, big guy, and I mean a big guy. Here he goes. Doesn't have the speed, but look at him move. His own man blocked him there, but that's okay. Troy Collins, number eight, with the ball. Back to Ross. What is it? They've got some time. They've got 12 seconds left. 22 on the clock. They want to use up as much as possible here. Five, four, three, score with four seconds. That leaves 16 seconds on the clock for Portland to answer them, which is not impossible. But it's oh, a good as they can do. They have to, they cannot wait to waste their time there. Nine to six, nine seconds now. Eight, seven, and there's a hole there. The hole is there with 4.5. Nicely done, nice block in there. And number 15. Yeah, Seth was able to clear out the corner. Keep the door open, right? Get his right. foot in the jam, and there was no way that the Lions were going to close that door before they scored. But, and that's it. And that's the end of the first quarter. This is Rob Rowan with x -Able Sports. And with me, uh, Max, it's really good to have you doing this with me. And we will be right back uh, in a few seconds for the second period of this game. We're 10-6, Portland over.